Okay, this is section 6.5, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. When we finish, I want you to be able to determine if an ordered pair is a solution, and I'd also like for you to be able to graph the inequality on the coordinate plane. So one of the first things I want us to do is recall how to verify solutions. So we're going to check whether this ordered pair, 0, 1, is a solution to 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So the first thing I have to remember is the first number in the ordered pair is my x value, the second number is my y value. And now I'm just going to go through, I'm going to plug it in, see if it makes a true statement. So I have 2, plug in 0 for x, minus 3 times 1 for y, and I want to see if that's greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, so I have 0 minus 3, so I've got negative 3. Is negative 3 greater than or equal to negative 2? No, so this is not a solution. Okay, let's look at this one. I have the same inequality, and this time my ordered pairs are the points 2, and my y value is negative 1. So now we're going to plug this in. I've got 2, plug in my 2 value for x, minus 3 times negative 1, and I want to see if that's greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, 2 times 2 gives me 4, minus, let's see, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So I have 4 minus negative 3. Two wrongs don't make a right, but two negatives make a positive, so I have 4 plus 3, which leaves me with 7. 7 is greater than or equal to negative 2, so yes, it's a solution. Now the other thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing some more graphing. So remember, this is in slope-intercept form. The coefficient of x is my slope, and this last value is my y-intercept. So I know my slope is a positive one-half. My y-intercept is negative two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot my y-intercept at negative 2. There's 0, negative 1, negative 2, and there's my point. Now remember my slope is rise over run. So I'm going to go 1 in the positive direction. Then I'm going to run 2 in the positive direction to get my second point. Now I'm going to take my straight edge, connect those two points, put my arrows on the end, and I'm done. Now the, the steps are going to be pretty much the same for a linear inequality. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this um, inequality is in slope-intercept form, which is the basic form of y equals mx plus b. Then we're going to plot the y-intercept, and then we're going to plot the next point using the slope. The line is going to be a little bit different. When we draw our line, we're going to have a solid line if we have less than or equal to, or if we have greater than or equal to. And we'll have a dot, dot, dashed or dotted line if we have less than or greater than. So a solid line, if it includes the points on those lines, which was goes with the equal to, a dashed line if it does not. Then the third thing we're going to do is shade the area that makes the statement true. Okay, now for this one, we're going to graph y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. 
So the first thing I need to remember is, okay, what's my y-intercept? It's negative 3. My slope is 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot my y-intercept at negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Plot my point. My y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to rise 2 for my y-intercept. And even though there's nothing over here, I know it's over 1. So I'm rising 2, running 1. What kind of line do I have? This tells me I'm going to have a solid line because it's less than or equal to. So now I take my straight edge, I connect my two points. Now there's my line. Now the last thing I have to do is I have to shade. And I'm going to shade below where y is less than 2x minus 3. Now this one I have two ways where I can do this. I can choose a point and see if it makes the statement true. So I'm going to choose the point 0, 0 because it's just really easy to work with. So I want to see if the point 0, 0 makes a true statement. So I'm going to go up here to the side where y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3 and I'm trying the point 0, 0. So I want to see if 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3. So is 0 less than or equal to negative 3? No. So I know that 0, 0 is not a solution. And that's above the line. So I know that I'm going to shade below. So this area right here would be my solution. Now another way that some people like to do it is they like to go down to the y-intercept right here. So when they go to the y-intercept, they, and they look at the y-axis. And they say, okay, where is y below this line? Where is y smaller? Well, y is getting smaller as I go down, so I'm going to shade below. Okay, now let's look at this one. Now on this one, I am not in slope-intercept form. So the first thing I have to do is I have to put it in slope-intercept form. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So then we have y is greater than negative x plus 3. So now I have my y-intercept is positive 3. My slope is negative 1. Even though there's no number there, I know that the coefficient of x is a negative 1. Now let's plot our points. Positive 3 for my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3. My slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go 1 in the negative, 1 in the positive got to be careful this time. I know that I have a dashed line because it's greater than. It's not greater than or equal to. So I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to make sure that I draw a dashed line through these points. Put my arrows on the end now I need to go through and graph. So if you want to choose the method where you go to the y-intercept and it wants to know where y is greater, I'm going to look at my y-axis. Which direction is y getting larger? Above this line. So I would shade right here. Okay, now let's take a look the other way. I had y is greater than negative x plus 3 
and I'm going to choose the point zero zero again because zero zero is really easy to work with. So if I have zero is greater than negative zero plus three, well is zero greater than three? No. So I know I would shade on the other side of the line. Okay, y, x minus y is less than or equal to 2. I already know I'm going to have a solid line because I have less than or equal to. But I am not in slope intercept form, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So now I have negative y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. Oh, but I've got a negative. I can't have that. So I'm going to divide each and every term by negative 1. Now what did I just do? I divided by a negative. So I have to change the direction of my inequality. So I have y is greater than or equal to positive x minus 2. Now my y-intercept is negative 2. See, negative 1, negative 2. My slope is 1, and it's a positive, so I'm going to rise 1, run 1. So there's my second point. Once again, I know I'm going to have a solid line because it's still or equal to. Take my straight edge. Now there's my line. Now I just have to figure out where to shade. So I'm going to check again with the point zero, zero. So I have y is greater than or equal to x minus 2. So I want to see if 0 is greater than or equal to x minus 2. Oops. Plug in 0 for x. Well, what's 0 minus 2? Negative 2 is 0 larger than negative 2? Yes. So I know that when I shade, I'm going to be shading above because that point zero, 0, is in the solution. Now if you're one of those people who like to go and look at the y-intercept, you're going to go to your negative 2 and you're going to say, okay, where is y larger? Well, if I go down, y is going smaller. Oh, if I go up, y is larger. So once again, I would shade above. Now this is one of our special lines. We've done this one several times. And the only reason I know this is a line is because I have a coordinate plane. Otherwise, we normally would just do this on the number line. So I've got x is less than negative 2. So I'm going to go to negative 2 on the x-axis. It's less than. So I know I'm going to have a dashed line. So I'm just going to have a vertical line. That goes at negative 2 right here. Now I'm going to put my finger right here, and I want to know which direction is x getting smaller. Well, x is getting smaller as I go this way, so I'm going to shade this way. So I'm shading to the left. I'm shading the direction that x it gets smaller. Okay, last one. Y is less than or equal to 3. So once again, I've done this one before. So I'm going to go up to the positive 3. I'm going to have a solid line. Oops, I didn't quite make it on the line. And I'm going to shade the area where Y is getting smaller. Where's Y getting smaller? Below this point. And that's my solution.